Sending EVs on the lookout is the outlandish 83-pound one-stroke. It can power a car, and it can power a plane. Since the invention of internal combustion engines, automakers have fitted their vehicles with three basic types of engines, two-stroke, four-stroke, and rotary engines. Fuel economy and power density varies between them, but their general operation is very similar. The air-fuel mixture goes into the cylinder, gets ignited, and pushes the piston, or rotor, which in turn rotates the engine's crankshaft, thus generating motion. Here's how in-engine's one-stroke differs. It's an opposed piston engine. It's got four times as much power as a four-stroke and double that of a two-stroke engine. No conventional valves, camshafts, crankshafts, or even cylinder heads on the one-stroke? Well, that'll trim it down to about, oh, say, 83 pounds? 120 horses from a half-liter engine sounds too good to be true. Let's do a walkthrough. The in-engine's E-Rex is an opposed piston engine with four pistons on either side to make a total of eight. Fixed rods hold together all the pistons, and they share one combustion chamber. These rods press against plates that have an oscillating wave-like design, allowing the rods to press and release the pistons in a synchronized, smooth process. Now, unlike a conventional diesel or gasoline engine, the E-Rex boasts a variable compression ratio on demand, meaning its combustion chamber isn't optimized for a particular fuel's energy, including hydrogen. Now, is the in-engine E-Rex really a one-stroke? It's technically a two-stroke. Gotcha, The piston travels back and forth, making for two strokes in its combustion process. Each piston executes two strokes, i.e. compression slash combustion and exhaust slash intake in half an engine revolution. Then by in-engine's logic, two strokes multiplied by a half a revolution is what gives it the patented one stroke. It's a marketing term that bends the truth a little, like 4K resolution for screens. The main difference between a one and two stroke engine is that in a traditional two stroke, oil mixes along with fuel for lubrication and some of it gets burned. Now this is not the case with the E-Rex. We're not the same. Lubrication and combustion take place separately as they would in a conventional four-stroke engine. The one-stroke has no vibes or no vibrations. According to in-engine, the moving parts do so reciprocally and in equilibrium at all times in three planes, canceling out one another. The motor also outputs power on either side without mods, which means the engine can power more than one axle. Now the drawbacks to the one-stroke is that even though in-engine has patented the E-Rex and has a working prototype, type, the engine hasn't been thoroughly tested. Two-stroke engines in cars today are mainly found in small propulsion applications such as off-road motorbikes, tuk-tuks, and other handheld equipment. They used to be everywhere, but you know, emissions regulations. Unlike the traditional two-stroke, the E-Rex aced its emissions test. With no forced induction, small size and smoothness could be ideal as an EV range extender. Now, in-engine did showcase a working prototype of the E-Rex in a Mazda MX-5 Miata. The engine was supposedly 500cc and occupied about half the space a 1.8 liter engine would and apparently made 120 horsepower. They did use a supercharger though. So are we likely to see this one-stroke engine in a gas-propelled car? Probably not. Considering the car industry is heading towards full electrification, the company seems to be targeting the EV market, where the engine would be a range extender. Hope you liked our one-stroke video. See you in the next one.